75 years ago on the beaches of Normandy the Allied troops of Britain, America, Australia, Canada and their allies fought for many hours against the German forces on the beaches of Normandy to start to try and reclaim Europe from the grip of Adolf Hitler and his Nazi regime. 75 years. It's come to my attention that there are quite a few people who seem to have forgotten this or have not been taught this. Today, the 6th of June, is D-Day. Normandy the landings, the landings operations, Tuesday, 6th of June, 1944, the Allied invasion of, the Norm of Normandy in Operation Overlord during World War II. And often referred to as D-Day, it was the largest seaborne invasion in history. The largest seaborne invasion in all of history up to that point. The operation began the liberation of, the, of German occupied France and later Western Europe from Nazi control and laid the foundation for the Allied victory on the Western Front. Planning the operation began in 1943. In the months leading up to the invasion, the Allies conducted a subsistential military deception, codenamed Operation Bodyguard, to mislead the Germans as to the date and location of the main Allied landings. The weather on D-Day was far from ideal and the operation had to be delayed 24 hours. A further postponement would have meant a delay of at least two weeks as the invasion planned had requirements for the phase of the moon, the tides and the time of day that only meant a few days each month were deemed suitable. Adolf Hitler placed German Field Marshal Ella Rummer, I hope I pronounced that correctly, in command of German forces and developing fortifications along the Atlantic Wall in anticipation of an Allied invasion. The amphibious landings were preceded by extensive aerial and naval bombardments and airborne assaults, landing of 24,000 US, British and Canadian airborne troops. Shortly after midnight, Allied infantry and armoured divisions began landing on the coast of France at 6.30 a.m. The target, 50 mile, that's 80 kilometres, stretch of the Normandy coastline was divided into five sectors, Utah, Oma, Gold, Uno, and Sword. Strong winds blew across the landing craft, each of their intending positions, particularly at Juha and Omega. The men landed under heavy fire from gun emplacements overlooking the beaches, and the shores were mined and covered with obstacles such as wooden stakes, metal tripods, barbed wire, making the work of the beach cleaning teams difficult and dangerous. Casualties were heaviest at Omaha, with its high cliffs, at gold, juno and sword. Several fortified towns were cleared in house-to-house -house fighting, and two major gun emplacements at gold were destroyed using specialised tanks. The Allies failed to achieve any of their goals on the first day. Korean, saint Lu, and Bruch, once again, Apologies for pronunciation, remained in German hands. And clearly, a major objective was not captured until the 21st of June. Only two of the beaches, Juno and Gold, were linked on the first day, and all five beachheads were not connected until June 12th. However, the operation gained a foothold, which the Allies gra gradually expanded over the c coming months. German casualties on D 
D-Day have estimated between four to 9,000 Allied casualties were at least 10,000, with 4,414 confirmed dead. Museums, memorials and war cemeteries in the area um, host many visitors each year. This, apparently, has been forgotten. This history has not been taught. It's said that now up to 20% do not know what D-Day is, what it stands for, or what it means. How can we forget the sacrifice of so many individuals from so many countries so easily? How dare we do this? We Life would have been so much different if DJ failed. We were on our last legs. We had been pushed back to England. There was no space in Europe that the Nazis did not have control of. There's very few bases that were even untouched by their iron grip by their tenacity, by their overwhelming success of their blitzkrieg, of taking countries, of taking land, of suggressing people. I'm not saying all Germans were like that during that time, you know. Most of them were blind to the atrocities that were committed by a few. But they still fought. They were fighting for something they believed in. They were riled up and convinced that this was the way to do things. They were led by a few very, very strong-minded individuals with charisma and passion and the ability to manipulate and control. They were led down a path of destruction, not only of themselves, their towns, of their cities, of their men, of their women, of their children, but also the destruction of entire communities, entire sects of people. The word fascism was created. The word genocide was created because of a few individuals who had knowledge and passion, decided to use it in a way that separated the country, that divided communities, that pit brother against brother because of their religion, because of their background, because of their hair color, because of their way of life. They believed everything they were told. They were manipulated by the media, persuaded by leaders to fight, and then, of course, to die. Just like the Allies. They weren't always told the truth. They fought for something they believed in. They believed that what was happening in Nazi Germany was wrong, and that needed to be stopped. They believed that this madman, as he's now called, Adolf Hitler, needed to be stopped. His genocide needed to be stopped. His manipulation of the German people needed to be stopped. And so we fought for it. We fought for freedom and peace for all of Europe. Not just for the United Kingdom, not just for France and Spain and Poland and Portugal and Italy and Germany and Sweden, Norway. S <sighs> Russia. We fought for peace for all nations, for all people, of all creeds, of all 
religions of all backgrounds. And now it seems that we have forgotten this very fact that we have gone against everything that those people gave their lives to do. Seventy-five years. Is that how little time it takes? Is that how little we care? Is that how corroded and seeded we have become? Seventy-five years. There are people still alive from that time. The ones that are dead must be turning in their graves to see that we have not learned from the mistakes of the past, that we have voted in tyrannical leaders, that we are turning against the very things that we fought to protect unity, prosperity, peace, coalition, working together as one. As one. We're now turning against a different religion, a different set of people. Sorry. It's just, it gets to me how easily things are repeated. How we've still not mis learned from the mistakes of the past. How many of you know about the piper, the lone piper on the fields, on the beaches of Normandy, who marched up and down playing his bagpipes? There are rumours to say that he was mad. He wasn't mad. He was following orders. He was told on his riding craft to get into his kilt, to get out his bagpipes and march up and down the beach playing his bagpipes. Why? Because there were 15, 16 year old kids on those landing crafts, white with fear. All the blood drained out of their bodies, unable to move, wrapped up in fear of the explosions, of the death, of the carnage around them, the smell of death lingering in the air. For days, they saw this lone piper marching up and down on these beaches under heavy fire on the constant threat of death. You know what? It helped them move. It helped them get off those landing crafts. It helped them up the beaches. It helped them secure a place. Yes, a load of them died. A load of them got injured. But still, that one sight was enough to make them move. 75 years. 75 years. So many of us have forgotten. So many of us continue to make the mistakes of the past. So many of us strive for things that Hitler did. So many of us have now decided that we are white supremacists, that it didn't even happen. There's so many people that say that the Holocaust didn't happen, that the Nazis weren't deluded, weren't wrong in their actions. those people I say, why? Why do you believe it? Why do you believe these lies? Why do you believe that this history, so well documented, is not true? And for those of you who are forgetting or forgotten the sacrifices of our armed forces, of the men and women who fought to protect us, I say go to Normandy. Walk up those beaches, walk along those beaches, visit the graves of the fallen, and ask, no, beg for forgiveness. For of the going down in the sun, and in the morning, we should and will remember them.